We spend a lot of time here on the channel talking about the eye contact, the body language, tonality, basically all of the surface level aspects of charisma. But I want to take a step back today and I want to talk about the mindsets that underpin all of those things. Because when you're having a conversation with someone, it becomes very, very difficult to focus on the eye contact that you have as well as the tonality that you have and the gesticulations all at the same time. When you get the mindsets firmly set in place, all of those sorts of things that are surface level tend to just flow easily. So today I want to talk about six mindsets, that's six mindsets, that lead to the kinds of charismatic behaviors that are going to make your life much, much better in terms of social professional interaction. And those mindsets are starting with number one, no matter what, I will be okay. In my opinion, this is the most fundamental mindset to charisma because so many people live their life wrapped in this sort of mental loop of what if questions, right? What if I speak up and my boss doesn't like my idea? What if I ask this girl on a date and she says no? Or what if I lean in for a kiss and even worse, she ducks away, right? What if I were to ask this person to go just as a friend out to coffee and they said oh, I was busy that day? All of these sorts of things stop people from acting, from speaking up, from expressing who they really are. Now, in the social context, what you need to realize is that the repercussions for even the worst case scenario of every single one of these are not so bad. You recover from these. If your boss doesn't like the idea, fine, move on. If a girl doesn't want to go on a date with you, probably better that you know rather than spending six months trying to figure out which signal she's sending that indicates that she does. So when you can get that mindset that no matter what, I will be okay. And I apply this to the social field. I don't necessarily mean that you need to extend this to jumping out of 40 story buildings, but socially, no matter what happens, you will be okay. That enables you to act with the sort of freedom that most people never ever experience. And that means that you can risk social things in terms of cracking jokes, expressing ideas, asking people, expressing how you feel. That means that you can risk that more than other people. And when other people see that you seem to have this immunity to social pressure, that you're expressing who you are more, they will naturally gravitate towards you because that is a strength that most of us really, really want to have in ourselves. The most fundamental piece, no matter what happens, you will be okay. If you ever find yourself stuck, not knowing if you should speak up, come back to this belief. It is so critical. The second belief, I care more about my character than about my reputation. Now, this is basically a quote from John Wooden that I've turned into a belief, but if you take that idea that your character is more important than how people perceive you, what you realize is the way that you are matters more than the way that people think that you are. So many people spend their lives trying to manage the opinions of other people, right? Will they think this if I do that? What happens if I do this? Even if I say the truth, they're still not gonna believe me, right? When you focus on just doing the right thing, worrying about your own character, and then letting people form opinions about you, what happens is people see that you're not overly invested in controlling how they feel, which makes them go, wait a second, if they don't care so much about how I feel, I can trust them to be genuine. So it's kind of paradoxical, but if you focus on your character and if you stop investing so much effort into controlling people's opinions of you, what tends to happen is that not only do you feel that freedom to act and be who you are, but people will have better opinions of you. It sounds crazy, but it is absolutely true. The third belief, and in my opinion, this is the one that is the least emphasized and needs to be talked about much, much more. And that belief is that you have impeccable honesty and impeccable integrity. Every single time that you tell a lie, even if it's a little, little lie, like, I'm on my way when really you're still getting dressed and showering. Or if it's a big lie on the other side, the type of lie that could potentially ruin a relationship. No matter what it is, even if you don't get caught, even if there's no negative consequences to the relationship, the problem is that you build a reputation with yourself when you lie. And that reputation is that sometimes you say words that aren't true. Sometimes you are not to be believed. And even if no one else finds out, you know this. Now this absolutely devastates your ability to speak with conviction. And this is critical to charisma, the ability to look someone in the eye and speak in a way that says to them, I believe 100% the words that are coming out of my mouth. The things that I say, I am fully standing behind. When you lie sometimes, you hurt your ability to speak with conviction all the time. Because in the back of your head, no matter what you're saying, you know that sometimes you lie. And that comes through in little gestures, it can come through in a flinch, in eye contact, in a little waver of the voice, whatever it is, that is going to break through. So my recommendation to you if you identify as someone, which is likely that sometimes lies, is to cut that shit out today. And the truth is, there's going to be a penalty pay, right? If you've started building a life that is predicated on a handful of convenient lies that might have seemed worth it at the time, walking them back and exposing the truth can hurt. 
my advice when I get questions about this, 90 to 99% of the time is to do it anyway. Are there situations around the periphery where it is just not worth it, where somebody's on their deathbed and you don't need to tell them that you don't believe in God because they do believe in God? Sure, there are times that, is, that, that fall under that circumstance, but for 90 to 9% of those situations where you're not sure, should I tell the truth, shouldn't I? The answer, even if it's damaging to that relationship, is yes. Because if you don't tell the truth, you are crushing your own self-esteem, you're crushing your ability to speak with conviction and to form genuine relationships in your life. So that is a huge, huge belief and it requires action. The fourth belief is that you do not need to convince any individual of any particular belief, action, anything. You don't need to convince anyone. And I know this sounds crazy coming from this channel because if you've seen some of our other videos, we talk about how to be more persuasive, how to get people to want to do the things that you might like them to do. So how do those two things square together? The idea behind those persuasive videos, how to be more persuasive, is that what you're learning how to do is to make your asks more persuasive, is to increase the odds that someone wants to do the things that you would like them to do. But the idea is not that you repeat that cycle over and over and over again and badger someone trying to make them do the things. You never need anyone to do anything. You are simply asking them. Now, where people run into trouble is when they have relationships in their life that they feel like they absolutely need to get someone to work a certain way. They need the boss to feel a certain way. They need a boyfriend or girlfriend to behave a certain way or a particular boy or girl to like them back so they can date. They need a family member to change their behavior. Then you enter into neediness. Then you are entering into trying to convince when you've gone back and forth over the same issue many, many, many times. What happens then is that your charisma is one, destroyed, because you need something from that person. The charismatic person simply asks and then decides, okay, if the answer is yes, great. If the answer is no, can I deal with this person and this relationship in this way? Is that acceptable to me? Or do I need to filter this person and this relationship out? This can be very, very hard. I recognize this when you're talking about old friends, family members, this can be tough. But if someone is not treating you the way that you'd like to be treated, the answer is not to engage in this repetitive battle to try to force them to be something that they don't want to be. The answer is either to accept that that relationship is going to remain the way it is or to filter them out of your life. And I realize that can be hard, but once you start filtering those periphery relationships, maybe those old friends that don't treat you the way you'd like to be, those old friends that don't push you in the way that you'd like to be pushed or that look at new hobbies and new endeavors with a discouraging eye, when you start to filter those out, you start to make room for the type of people that are going to lift you up. So really, not convincing people and entering into that filtering mindset is so, so important. The fifth mindset for charisma is that charisma and you need to start communicating your purpose more proactively. I know that a lot of people spend a lot of their lives engaged in small talk, right? And people ask you what you do, where you're from, and you wind up with the same rote answer telling them job title, this, that, yeah, it's great, oh, we went on a vacation, blah, blah, blah. Charismatic people have a purpose that they are fired up by, and while they're not going to shove it down your throat, when it comes up in conversation, what you do, they are willing, they are eager, they will tell you what their purpose is. And I realized this, I remember, I was watching an episode of The Buried Life, which if you don't know it, these four guys who had this really long bucket list and they would go through the bucket list doing these amazing things, play basketball with Obama, right? And then they'd help other people do items on their bucket list. And one of the ways that they got to actually play basketball with Obama is by walking around the streets of Washington, D.C. and just telling people, hey, we've got this list. On this list is we want to play basketball with Obama. Can you help us? And before they knew it, within days, they were in senator's office. They were making calls to Obama. Long story short, months later, Obama sees the TV show on MTV, invites them in, and they get that dream, right? This incredible thing happens, but only because they've repeatedly put it out there. This isn't the secret. This isn't the universe hearing. This is other human beings hearing, being inspired by that, that message, being inspired by that desire, and then helping them. So make sure to put your purpose out there into the world. The sixth mindset is that you need to start going first. And in the book, Charisma on Command, I exploded this out into six different beliefs. But the truth is it can be boiled down. Go there first. Be the first person to extend praise in a group of people that are not very comfortable doing that. Be the first person in a new group of strangers who cracks a joke. Be the first one in a new group who is talking, who shares something vulnerable, right? When you are the person who is leading the group towards areas where you can connect more, whether that means being fun, extending praise, being vulnerable, all of those things signify leadership to other people. They signify bravery because you're doing that thing that other people are nervous to do. And when you do that, you naturally are going to become the type of person that other people want to be around. And what you've found, I'm sure in your own life, is that you'll be in a group of people, it'll be very solemn, one person will crack a joke. 
and then somebody else feels comfortable. They crack a joke. And all of a sudden, the whole group dynamic has shifted. The same thing happens with vulnerability. Somebody opens up and shares a story about their life. And the next thing you know, you're going back and you're connecting on a level that was previously not available. People remember who the first person to do that was. And it makes them so much more endearing because they are the one taking the social risk. Be the person who takes the risk, who goes there first. And of course, remember that no matter what happens here, it will be okay. That is the fundamental belief. So hopefully the six to 12, depending on how you count them, beliefs can be very, very helpful in your own life. As you start to incorporate them, you will find that they make a tremendous difference. This doesn't mean to throw everything else to the side. This means that you can still focus on your eye contact, your body language, all of that stuff, but you wanna be building the mindsets concurrently with those sort of surface level things. And if you focus on one of each at a time, that I find is the best way to do it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you wanna learn more about how to change your inner belief in terms of confidence, we've set up a different video that covers how to feel more confident inside of 60 seconds. And this is something that you can do for a presentation, a date, whatever it is. It's a little exercise that is actually very physical in nature and it will help you feel more confident Pretty much like that, uh, a little bit longer than that, 10, 10 seconds to 60 seconds. So if you're interested in getting that video, go ahead, click the link that will pop up over here. It's gonna take you to a page where you can drop your email and then see that video. If you have enjoyed this video and have not yet done so, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel. We'll have another link to do so here. We have new videos like this, sometimes talking heads, sometimes charisma breakdowns where we analyze a charismatic personality and see exactly what it is that makes them so charismatic and confident. So go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Any comments, any suggestions of videos you'd like to see, topics you'd like me to cover, people you'd like me to break down, please put those below in the comments. And of course, I thank you for watching this video and hope to see you again in the next one.